Hello everyone and welcome to the video. I made this specifically for people that are interested in the barter life skill and for those that wants to get these big ships called the Karax or what my group personally call them as Karax. So I want to go to the concepts and provide more details and short summaries of what to do and why you should do it for this life skill. I hope by the end of the video you will be able to make your own ship um, understand more of the process and develop your own style in bartering and as well as get those silver gains into your storages. Let's start with introductions, a brief background of my experience in bartering. Currently I have two Karaks, the Advance and the Valor. The Advance I use for barrings because of the weight and the Valor I use for sea monster hunting. So the main question now is, what is bartering exactly? Bartering is a system of exchanging a craftable or gatherable item into a barter item. And there are five levels. There's the level one, the level two, the level three, four, and five. The end product of a barter cycle is the five million item, which is the orange grade items. You can sell these items directly to the vendor without getting taxed, and that is your main barter profit. There are certain routes where you can exchange your level 4 for a set of crow coins. You can also exchange your level 5 for crow coins on some certain islands. Those crow coins can be exchanged here in Lemma Island with this NPC called Rebinia, and you can exchange those crow coins for Cron stones, Caphras, memory fragments, you know, there's a weekly and a daily, and also for Manos accessories. But the most, you know, valuable here is the Khan's concentrated magic. The current value of Khan's heart is now peaking at 7.9 billion at the time of the recording so it's very valuable and profitable but it does take time to accumulate that much of coins. One of the questions I get asked the most is how much money do you make bartering and there's a lot of people that have already posted their testimonials and their charts on the total money that they made but I want to simplify this concept so that newer players would better understand how the flow of the silver works. As you can see here we're in the Eveto Island and this barter NPC over here, Javio, is asking for powder flames for pirate's gun powder. And as you can see the price of the powder flame is 1,870. 300 of those is 561,000 and 6 of the whole set of 6 is 3,366. So as you can see here if we go now to our ship where we have the powder of flame available, you would see an anchor button once you're near the barter NPC. And when you hit that, it would show you how much you have and how many he is willing to trade. So 300 to 1. Continuous exchange 6 and the barter has been completed. This means that we can start trading pirates gunpowder depending on what the game produces or you know set on the islands we could check that by clicking on the picture we now arrive at Boa Island where in the NPC Shamihi is asking for two gunpowders for four of the parachute mast that's because of the exchange ratio of one to two but as you can see on some islands some NPCs would give you three items in exchange for one and that happens for level 1 to 2 and also level 2 to 3. One thing that remains constant on every trade is the level 3 to 4 which is always 1 to 2 and the level 4 to level 5 which is always 1 to 1. Meaning that the items that you have currently can grow and you could have base of 6 items grow into 18 level 2, 54 level 3s, and up to 324 level 5s. And that totals, if you sell them all along the way, to 1,620,000,000. 
and that doesn't happen in just one barter. As you accumulate the materials in your inventory, you can have the option to select which island that you want to go. But for beginners, you will have no choice but to go through island to island to accumulate the materials that you need. And to give you a better visual of what I just explained, let's go and check this um, current barter cycle. As you can see, I sorted it by the orange grade. And since I have all of the materials that I would need to trade for these directly, then I could just skip all of the trades from level 1 to level 4 and go directly to level 4 to level 5. And as you can see here, per island will be 20 million. And I could go from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, T4 to T5s, and that's 220 million. And if we go back to the barter window, you can see I have one shipwreck ancient relic transport vessel trade from three T4s to the 10 million islands, which is an additional 30 million. And that is a total of 250 million, not including the crow coin trades, which I could use to buy, you know, the Caphras uh, for the bundles, which is going to be around like 12 million if we sell it in the current market price and then for the memory uh, memory fragments would be, which would be another 5 million so your ship has stats basically that's your AP in terms of grinding and that's how much you could load and um, barter from island to island and your stats is kind of like your padding on how well you could travel from island to island meaning that could you carry like five items or ten items so you can see on the screen my ship is named weatherlight it's from the mtg lore if you're not familiar with it you don't have to worry about it but for mtg fans they would know so you could see there on this side and marking in right now is the current weight of my karak is 21,720 so if we compare that to a nefarious sailboat and a frigate, I will show it to you on the right side of the screen, is that the nefarious sailboat only has 5,000 weight. What does that mean? I'll show you in a bit. And the Taro, my Taro Ephiria frigate, only has 4,000 weight. So it's very limiting for you to carry around the items and you can see on the left side now is I'm showing you the weight. So level one has 800, level two has 800, level three 900, and four, two, level five, like even the Margoria um, T5 items is 1000 weight. So for me, I could carry four times what the Eferia sailboat can make and five times as a frigate can. Of course, like there are some equipments that they could equip to increase their stats but at base um, it doesn't compare to a uh, crack the next thing is the speed you can see that with just these green gear and I don't plan on going full blue maybe in the future for my advanced because I'm working on the full blue for my valor um, I just bought and not bought but created the Kairos cannon to increase the weight by 2500 which is very helpful and my speed now is at 147.4 so let's segue a bit to the sailors I'm gonna be discussing this a little bit more on detail on another section so the sailors gives you stats which is like one of the most important things I would say in the beginning is the speed so that is the endurance so you can see here that my Juno Wood gives 3.9 in terms of speed and his cabin cost is 10 and my Karak can have 50 which means I could have five sailors for my boat but if you compare it to the right the Taro Eferia sailboat and the frigate can only have 10 meaning that they can only have one of the innocents that I currently have you know boarding my ship lastly but not the least 
is your parley management and your barter refresh. As you can see here on the screen that each item has a specific parley required in order for you to exchange the item and meaning that this is like you no know, 10,293 times 6 would cost you about 61,000 and as you can see here that for the required parley you could get deduction as your mastery for bartering increase and you get an additional 10% deduction when you have a value pack for the barter refresh, this one is also affected by your value pack. If you have a VP, then you have an additional 50. If not, you start at 100. And the trade item barter refresh increases as you go through the items, meaning that the first one is 20, the next one is 40. But there's also um, trade item barter instant refresh wherein if you have not yet waited for that four hours, which is the cooldown, then you can use it instantly. So what does this all mean? It means that you can only trade specific number of items per cycle. You have to wait four hours for you to refresh the islands that are near you or like, you know, the items that you want to get. And you have to properly manage them in order for you to exchange all. But there's an item called the Crow Voucher and as you can see over here that it lets you add 250 but the problem is like 250,000 parley I mean but the problem is the cooldown for this one is 4 hours meaning you can only use it for one cycle or if you're gonna go you know AFK longer then you could use at least two. So there's a lot of way to get your boat. And that's the best way to get started. For beginners, I suggest you wait three months. But what do you mean? So it means that you wait for you to get 30 seals, the Shining Shock 2 seals that the game gives you 10 a month. So once you get to the third month, then you would have 30 coins to exchange for an Inferior sailboat. So this is the most painless way of getting a sailboat and starting. The next one is going to the central market, going to your ship um, list and registrations and you can see that players are building the frigates and the sailboat for sale and over here that at the current you know market value at the time of recording one sailboat is 500 million. You could you know wait for a couple of months then sometimes it does drop whenever there's like you know um, a free event or like you know once some players exchange their sailboat to sell then you could buy it for a lower price so one of my friends got it for 470 million and that's a good price saves you a lot of time and pain on getting your own sailboat the old way is by going to portiferia house um, 3-4 at the second floor and getting this shipyard to level 3. The bad thing about this one is it's the slowest method of getting your sailboat. What do I mean by that? You can only get the designs from Filiberto Falasi, which is also here daily. And there's some also weekly quests that you could do to get like two designs. And one thing to note, you don't chuck in timber squares like you know 800 pieces of them and it process, it's done. No, it ticks slowly one by one. So it has to have 800 ticks, steel 600 ticks, and so on and so forth. So you would wait up until like, you know, three weeks to a month or more, depending on how you accumulate the um, materials and how you interact with your workers. I mean, like in terms of um, feeding them in order for them to continually work on your items. And the fourth method, which I recommend for a few of the newer players that have the patient of a monk, or you know, if you really want to experience building or crafting, or if you enjoy it, then you could go to Villa and go to this NPC called Prox. I hope I pronounced that right. And you buy a ship license Bartali sailboat. 
after you've registered that Bartali sailboat in the wharf, then you could go to upgrade ships and it will bring out this window. It shows you what material you need for the frigate or the sailboat. For beginners, I recommend going to the sailboat because going to the frigate kind of takes a longer time and has lesser weight for barring. So if you want to do like C PVP, then I'm, you know, I encourage you to go over here. But if you're just like wanting to barter and go to the advanced route for the weight, then go to the sailboat. So you can see here that you need um, a lot of materials, but the benefit of this one versus the last one that we talked about in Neferia is it, it's instant. Once you have all of the materials over here, you can just put it in your inventory, click upgrade, and the boat is yours. The only issue here is the hard pillars and the license. The license itself is a hundred million. So think about that. And this one is 2,920,000, so times 100 is 292 million. So you already have, you know, cashing out 392 million. And over here, it would kind of get to about a total of 530 ish million, if I'm calculating it correctly in my head. Like, you know, it depends upon the market price. So that means you're going to be spending more building this one, not including like the black stones that you're going to be using to upgrade this, um, you know, Batali sailboat items. So that's why I highly recommend out of the methods that I've shown you is to either choose from the Chakra 2 seals or buying it from the market. And questing nowadays gives you a lot of money and you would have that 500 million in no time. Now that you know how to acquire the boats, I want you to pay attention to the screen and look at these four prows. So these are the Eferia Carax, or Carax, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Um, these are the end products for the ship. So the Advance and the Valance can only be made from the sailboat into the Caraval and then into the Advance and Valance. For Volante and Valor, it has to be from a frigate and the frigate to the improved then to the Galias um, and then to Volante and Valor so make sure like you know before you invest money into the boat you want to you know visualize yourself with what ship you would want to be driving out there in the sea so for me personally I'm targeting to create all four of them I already have the advance and the Valor and the next one I'm trying to build is the Volante. So now what I'm gonna do is actually build a new frigate so I could start and you know have that journey with you on creating a new Karak or a Karak so we can experience that you know building part together. Okay, now the fun part begins. Let's build the boat. So first thing on our menu is the Bartali sailboat. Old pro, old plating, old cannon, and old wind sail. So I'm gonna put a tally on the right side. So let me move this a little bit. So that as we go, you would see how much we are spending. And I know I've discouraged people to do this, but as I've mentioned, you know, like it, it's one of the things that you could you know, actually enjoy doing because like, you know, you slowly see your boat being built. So now we're going to talk to this guy, Filiberto Falassi. He's on top of the hill and we're going to get those old mats. So this one's for 100,000. This one's also for 100,000. The most expensive one is the old plating and the old wind sail. So 
So we completed the first part. We got the pro, the plating, the cannon, and the wind sail. So as you can see on the right, we had to purchase four of them for 1.6 million, and we have to buy 12 of each because the enhancement chance was 100%, and we had to use 12 of the same one to repair. So that is a total of 19,200,000. Not bad. So the next one that we need to do is to get the timber square, the jade corals, pine coated plywood, um, enhanced flax fabric, and the expensive hard pillar. So when I started the video, it was just 2,850,000. Now it's 2,890,000. So we're going to keep the tally on the right and we're going to go ahead to the marketplace. And the good thing is I had some logs lying around. So I was able to get the standardized timber square for basically free. But if you buy this in the market, which is kind of impossible at the current state of the market, it is 106 million. The Jade Coral too, I had some lying around from like a quest an event that happened before and I purchased half of it but the total is if we're gonna buy it at 211,000 it's 168 million 800,000 the pine coated plywood I have a lot of these lying around because of the comma Sylvia dailies as well as the flax fabric and this costs about 6 to 3 million and this one 14 million 265 thousand at the current market and the hard pillar is 299 million this ones I um, just bought because I don't have a plywood hardener so I didn't want to waste much time and we got the silver and then like bought the um, if you forget um upgrade permit and the total cost of the whole ship of the whole frigate is 851 million 84,200 so not bad if we're gonna be buying it off of the market then it would have costed us 1.8 billion so now we're gonna hit the grand button the upgrade so this is the one that i was talking about so if you do it on the typical you know 3-5 house it's gonna take a while but with the upgrade for um this one it's instant so i hope that i got all of the Platings and you know sail cannon pro repaired. I think I did and let's hit the upgrade And there we go Taro is now an official port Eferia frigate um so as you can see, we could go over and take it out to have a look, make sure we buy some supplies for it, and we're going to explore the stats for it. And this is why I prefer Lon as your main boater, or your main, um, what do you call that, the captain of your ship. So before we continue, I just want to impart to you a technique that I do for my settings if you go to your settings and search for barter it would show you this interface setting UI hotkey and barter information I put the call ship which puts you on in front of the wheel and you're also able to click it again so you would ride your boat. So this is very helpful when the dock is full of boats and you can't find your boat. And, or like if you fall into the water um, or during Vel, like you have to dive, then this is very useful. You don't have to go to the ladder. Um, I'll show it to you a little bit. And barter information is the one that you could use to just instantly bring up the barter window. So this is the one I was talking about. If you dive in, you click here, and voila, you're back into the ship. So I now loaded into one of my alt characters, and she's level 45, under 50, which means that she cannot be attacked. And for the next section, she will be very, very valuable. So we're now waiting here on the dock of 
Portiferia to hire some sailors. And as you can see, they're slowly trickling in. And each sailor has specific stats. But as a beginner of bartering, I would recommend you get Innocence only. So they're the one that basically have the highest speed. And at the beginning, since you're limited by weight, you compensate by speed. The other place where you can get sailors is with Istin Bartali. You would just go to her and buy the sailor contract certificate. It's the same one as the one in Filiberto Falasi. So you could use it on both ports. And once you purchase that one, the sailor should start appearing soon. So as you can see here, um, we were lucky that an innocent sailor has appeared. So we could go and approach him. Oops. Approach him and hire sailor. He would give a speech that if they get a full haul, um, he wants to buy a patch of land. So that makes me <laughs> oh, kind of guilty. Okay, so... Now that we have the sailor, we would go back to the character that we will be using to start bartering. And we go to Taro, take it out, our frigate, and you go to manage sailors, and you will be able to board in Neil Moss, which is our um, newly hired sailor. So now that we have the sailor Neil Moss on our ship, the speed is now reflecting on the frigate's total speed. As you can see here, it's 1.2 and the 1.2 is over here. The next thing I would suggest for beginners to do is upgrade your ship into an improved Aferia frigate. This doesn't bring you any upgrades other than the captain's cannon, which would be very helpful when you are trying to get the sea monster ooze which we'll be discussing on another video and this is just around 143 million at the time that i upgraded it so it you would just need to buy again from philosophy the um if you're your play um the fair plating sales um pro and the cannons which is fairly cheap and the standardized timber square that you could log and chop trees yourself the steels that you know you could also gather and produce yourself so these are very easy to get materials except for the hard pillars i would recommend to just buy it off the market this cost me 89 million 700 at the time of this purchase so but if you want to kind of like um, re reduce the cost then like you could produce this yourself and 10 ultimate weapon reform stones which you could get from killing bosses and then exchanging the hunter seals to this one so this one is basically free um, if you think about it so now we're gonna be hitting the our magical upgrade button let's upgrade And let's bring out our new ship. Make sure to put Neil back into the ship so he would level up as you go. And as you can see, we now have the captain cannons on the side, which is four cannons here and four cannons here. So this would greatly help you when you're traveling and you want to hit some, you know, sea monster hunting quests or want to get some kills in to get the ooze. Now that you have your boat, go back to Vela and open up your quest window. You would see here that under the suggested tab, there is the Great Expedition Oculus Eye. And there's a reason why you need to do this, mainly because of the cog. So as you can see here and the Canilla Delcus, it gives you a license for the cog and also gives you either five verdant stones or the sea monster ooze. So you would need this 
to go to crow's nest now you don't need this exactly but it would really help you out exploring the island as you can see that this one has 140 acceleration and speed and you could use breezy sail on this one even though your character is not yet skilled one so just to remind you about the one that i mentioned earlier you would need to trade your level one items for verdant stones and you can only do that in crow's nest meaning you either accumulate a lot of those ones before heading out over there or you can use the cog to go back and forth and slowly upgrade your gear as you go and you can also go to the pearl shop to the loyalties and search for the cog and you will be able to buy this um, license for 1000 loyalty so if you prefer to not do the quest and just go directly over there then you could use this one also you will need to purchase parts for explorers compass so that you can navigate through the sea now when you go to margoria the map would be disabled you won't see where you're at at the map you won't be able to auto path and you won't see the direction now we're going to try and get all of the verdant stones that we need to upgrade your equipment remember that you need at least 220 in order to upgrade all of the Ethereum gear that we bought at um, port Ethereum. so how to get those verdant stones so there's two parts first is by going to your wharf manager and then getting one of these um, level ones like these are the ones that we traded earlier and putting it into your inventory now this comes at a price so what am I might so there's a problem over here you're only able to exchange your level ones to Rovinia with a character above 1000 weight so it's either you have to you know just do the normal quest line and get your weight or you have to buy from the pearl shop and you know expand your weight for your main character so i would suggest you know as a beginner like don't use your um, alt characters as your barter um exchanger because you only need to travel from this wharf manager to here and you would need to exchange that just like find it over there and there it is it's zero weight so you don't need to put extra weight on your alt just a reminder on that one because like one of my friends that just got into the game did that because like um she thought that you need to have you know a, a character with a heavy weight um limit to exchange the verdant stones you don't you just need like your main character to to do the back and forth for you so the next thing that you would do is just like store this one into your storage you then switch back to your alt character that you want to travel with to um, crow's nest go back to storage and get that voucher and as you can see here it's over here we're not going to do the whole 220 um, for this video because like that's going to take a long time and you bring out your cog that you've attained through the quest or um, through the loyalty um, ticket and I was supposed to name this Rotor but I'm <laughs> I put T so it's now Totor oh man but you go to your cog and we're gonna head now to crow's nest so when you begin um traveling to sea you would have this all grayed out so that's why i recommend you go to something lovely which is i've included the site below um, on the description and explore the islands you would see there like the barter npcs that have the arrows as well as the actual island node managers so you can unlock them but like if you don't want to do that then like you know that's totally fine you don't need it yet so the only thing that you need actually is the one that i showed you um in the beginning like the seven islands and that's it but the reason why we're going to um crow's nest is because we want to get half of the materials needed for your galias or your caravel and i'm posting it on your screen right now 
As you can see, we need 10,000 of each of those ones and 300 um, monster ooze. So that's a lot. Like the elder tree sap you can buy, but for the acacia and the um, white setter sap, those are hard to come by. So what do I mean by that? If you search for them in the market, there's none there and there's 91,000 pre-orders. Also, the acacia sap, this is worse, 166,000 pre-orders. So I don't, you know, expect the new players to get that much. So that you are facing so it's easy to get lost so this would help you tremendously so it's better to go to the crow's nest to do the ravinia quest and i also posted a link down below grumpy green has like a perfect guide for it um, i'm not i'm not able to show you that one because it's account wide quest and i've already completed it so i won't be able to do it but like i will be guiding you on how to go to crow's nest from Velia so that you would have a visual on you know what islands to avoid and what to see going over there um, but before we do that you could also invest in some of the nodes in order to get those saps so you could do one for the iris canyon it has the elder tree over here and you could also get the gorgo rock belt it's also a elder tree node the other one is in Stonetail Wasteland, and this is the Acacia Sap and the Bloody Tree Knot, but that one's um, very easy to get in the marketplace. The next one is the Elric Shrine for the White Setter Sap, and the last one is for from the Medea Northern Highlands. So I would suggest to invest in these ones. They, you know, they do contribute, and probably in a month you'll get enough. So now, so we're coming from Kron's castle and we're going to be heading towards heading towards Crow's Nest. So I'm not going to use any auto path, like I'm just going to rely on visual for this guide. So let's go. So this one is Weta Island. If you do want to explore Prada Cave, then you could just like go down here and head over to the um, image, and the NPC should be over there. But we're not gonna go down because our main purpose is traveling to Crow's Nest. And as you can see here, like, you know, that's water spout, the island on your left side is Lemma Island. So if you want to explore this one too, you could just head over that way on that like little island before the main island and you, you would see the NPCs over there, like over here. And once you see Lemma, what you would do is just like turn just a tad bit right and keep holding W shift and you would see this um, fairly tall um, double island here here and here and then there, there's a the middle one which is like the big island that is Ilya Island And you could also go there later on our way back, but we're not gonna stop there for now. So this is the Rasid um, Island and the Al Naha.
So once you are here, you would see like there's like um, three islands. One on the right, which is like the very long island. And this short um, hill of an island and these ones. So once you get to this point, like there's always a sea monster spawned at this part. So it's fairly like, you know, easy to um, indicate that you're kind of near a crow's nest. And what you would do is just go forward a little bit and it should drop the fog. So it means that you're in the right direction. And once you arrive at Ross Sea, you can see your map is gone. Like your map direction is gone. Once you arrive at Ross Sea, you can see that your map direction is gone and your compass will kick in. You can see where you are at and where your character is heading. But if you don't have a compass, this will be, you know, not visible. So what you would do now is just like keep heading straight. Just make sure that like, you don't stop like I did because you're gonna get um, sank by that Golmon small battleship. Just breezy all the way to that island and it's very visible like it should be easy to see even with low settings and you can see like that huge cloud looming over the um, left side of the island So we have arrived at Crow's Nest. You can see on the right hand side it says Crow's Nest and Your destination over here is this gal named Ravinia. She's the one that exchanges for the Verdant Stones and also is the quest giver for the seven days log. So you would talk to her except that day one and just make sure that you don't throw away anything that she gives because if you do you won't be able to take it again. So just keep that in mind. So go to the exchange. And you would see here that you could exchange your Merchant Guild Barter Voucher for a Verdant Stone, which you could use to upgrade your equipment. So once you get that one, all you have to do is open up your Black Spirit Enhancement and choose the gear. So for this one, I've tested on 50... Um, And once you have, you know, our little blob open, just choose your equipment. And this is also 100% chance all the way, but it eats up 10 durability when you do so. So as you can see here, 100 durability, enhance, it's now 90, and then there, it's now 80. So as you can see, so you would need 220 of the Verdant Stones in order to fully upgrade all of your gear that you would need to upgrade it to a Galeas or a Caravel. So my recommendation is before you head here, make sure that you have enough vouchers, um, at least 220, and that's enough to upgrade all of your gear to plus 10 for your Galeas or your Caravel. Another advice I want to give you is that as you are doing these quests, make sure you have your pre-orders up because that one really, really helps. Like once somebody sells a lot of those materials, then you could pick up about a thousand and that's already, you know, one tenth of. So the next step you would do is to go to Okila Island. And the way I recommend it is to go back to where you were from and you should be able to see this island again. And you could just like right click above the Yongsi monster habitat 
this indicator should be visible even though you have your map you know unexplored or you still have the fog of war so you could just like click on that one right click and press T and that should bring your boat over there At this point of the map, you should be able to see the Okila Island. You would see there, there's a sharp mountain that looks like a volcano. And you could just go ahead and breezy sail over there. Okay, once you see this um, kind of like excavation site, it means that you've arrived. And the first thing that you should do is go over to Ravikal. So <laughs> I have a quest completed on him. So as you can see, I've already finished the Ravikal test. And this was the quest you get from him that asks you to barter three times. And after you've done that, he gives you 300 CP, which is super good. And sailing skill XP and an Aquila coin. This one, you um, it's very important when you're building a Karak. So once you get to 150, you'll be able to exchange for materials that are hard to get um, for your Karak. And for this one, you would get the um, deep sea memory field glue if you want to get for the Caraval. And if not, then you could just like get the other ones, which is for the Mina Cannon and for the upgraded plating. So for this one, we're just going to get the Pure Pearl Crystal because I don't need the other one since I'm going for a Volante. So once you get to complete the three barter quests, you now go to this part, up the stairs, and then just like say hi to Herod. He's the one that gets the 150 Okila coins. And then find this NPC, it's just an unnamed soldier, and do the quest. It's also a daily, and get four Serendian soldiers. And then this one gives you the enhanced island tree um, coated plywood. So for the Galeas, you need 100 of these. And for the Caraval, you also need 100 of these ones. So for this one, like um, we just have to accept and then do another 10 trades and go back here at Aquila. The good thing about this one is once you've you know um, explored this one it would be visible in the map like so and you could just like auto path from Vela without any issues unless you encounter a pirate and they decide to sink you. The other daily that's important over here is this one from another unnamed soldier and this gives you this three quests. So you will have to get these ones, but the materials that are included in these ones are for... And there's alternate um, ways you could get these ones because your cannons are not good enough damage to actually kill Margorial monsters. So what I would recommend is to skip these for now. The next thing to do in Aquila is go up these stairs. and talk to this otter named Curio. So what he gives is two quests that are very important. This one is for the precious coral piece. Uh, I will show you where to get it. Um, the seaweed stock is needed for the caravel. You need six of these um, for the upgrade. The next one is for the young otter merchants. This is fairly easy and it gives you the ruby manganese snow jewel. 200 CP and some sailing XP. You don't need this now, but later on for your Karak, you would need a lot of these ones. And also the Okila coin dailies is very, very good. Before you dive down there, make sure that you have a hoe equipped because you would need it in order to extract the materials from this coral. And now we have to prepare for your first barter. 
first thing that you would do is go to Valia and get all of the storage houses that you can that your CP allows. There are also houses that are located in the farms in Logia Farm, in Finto Farm, Bartoli Farm, Marino and Toscani Farms. So those are really good for providing um, great storage. So you can see here this provides 8 and this provides 12. So that's 20 and that's like actually more than what you would need because as you can see here on my Ilya storage everything stacks except the T5s so you could just like you know get all of those ones stack it up and then trade it up so if you do the one two three um, exchanges that I've mentioned before then you'll be set the only thing that you have to focus on is the seven islands over here you would just go to island to island up until you exhausted all of these for your barters and then refresh so the purpose of it is you would have all of the stocks and t1s that you need to the point that you don't even care about getting these anymore so for example on my setup and my buildup i haven't exchanged any t1s in about a week and a half now so that's the exponential benefit of getting all of the t1s at first so you don't have to worry about anything else let's do the clown's blood as an example as our first barter what you need to do is purchase this off the market go to the market and search for that item purchase for 180 of those because that six trades for those items for the level one and you can see it it costed us six million two hundred eighty eight so that's your investment for the barter items and then transfer that over to your storage the next step is going over to your wharf manager going to load cargo and finding that item in your storage The next thing is making sure that you have supplies for your ship and your sailors are fed. You could buy the feeds for the sailors over here. They like raisin bread. For some reason I can't explain. <laughs> and then the next one is you could use the mouse function that I have um, mentioned earlier to make sure that you can find the wheel of your boat. navigate to that island and press T to autopath so that's basically the basic steps of bartering once you press T your boat goes you don't have to press anything navigate to um, through the winds or the waves because the pathing path would do that for you now like there's some some horrible pathing path that you have to check your ship from time to time but majority of the times like especially of the changes that they made recently it's smooth sailing now you get to the barter NPC you don't have to go down but I would recommend you go and explore the islands um, beforehand if you are you know if you have free time go from island to island there is a site called something lovely that shows you the exact location of the islands and the node managers so I would recommend to visit that site and try to explore a lot of these ones or if you have a friendly person in the guild that has a better boat then ask them to drive you around the islands to get your um, exploration nodes and be able to see the islands and what 
they're bartering like what the barter is currently over there so once you get to this point you just click on the anchor that appears on your screen I would recommend to click on the explorer what this does it, it might give you some chance on items or you can see here it gives you some stat bonuses not not really stat bonuses but like you know durability um, ratios and stuff like that but you could get like a gilded um, ship I think that costs a hundred million or you can get like Okila flowers that you could use towards a null and there's a lot of things that could happen over here but the one that I'm um, most happy about getting here is the barter support box so as you can see here this one gives you a lot of materials that you could use towards your um, boat building as you can see here the one that I got is um, more on like you know the sap so got like 1500 setter saps 1500 acacia saps and 900 of the elder tree so that means I only need a thousand one hundred for you know to complete that part so this really helps but this is very 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 rare like I would say like um, it drops uh, like one out of 100 and based on my experience it, it can even be more than that because like there was a month that I did bartering that I didn't get a single barter support box but I got those like 50 million 100 million items And that is something that you really need not need to concern yourself about because like it's highly RNG and I don't really put it against um, or add it to my income in bartering because it can happen and it cannot. So the thing that you would do is click on barter. You can see you have your possessions uh, over here and click on continuous exchange. It would ask you how much. You would put six. Partly consumed. So 12,857 times 6 would be your um, parley consumption and boom you get all of those ones now you can see there was a message that said your mount is heavy so I believe that this is between 28 to 30 percent in addition to your current weight and that helps a lot the bad thing about this is it would slow your ship down significantly and you are prone for pirates that's why I have the level 45 at the beginning of my gathering when I started or like you know getting off the level 1 materials because like even though like you know they flag up on me they cannot sink my ship so if you have you know a character that's level 50 and up then you can get sank and all of your items will be gone Another insurance that you could carry is this one, Loyalty Tears of the Wind. The problem is it's 600 loyalty and it would like, you know, revive your ship and everything that it had when you got sunk. But some of the pirates like wait around and wait for you to use this one and sink you again. So um, I would just suggest that at the beginning when you're just starting to level up your bartering, use a low level character. The final step is going over back to your wharf manager, going to load, and putting all of these ones, make sure that you have your actual storage in and not your inventory, and load them in. And you can see it would be here, and you could just like load it back in case you want to load, um, you know, trade it to another island, Sakura Island. But now you don't really need it. What I recommend is doing what I've done accumulate all of the T1s and then the T2s and then build your T3s and only go for the 1 to 3 trades so why am I focusing only on T1s at the beginning so there's a reason for that 
So you can see here the concentrations of the T1s is around this area. And then some of the T2s would be over here on this area. And also this one. And here. And majority of the T3s is around these areas. T4s would be around here. And T5 would be the nearest areas. Over here, 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 here. So that means the more T1s you have, the more option you can have on skipping the island. So let me show you the example of the ones that we did last time. The dried blue rose would put you here on Sakota Island. And this one brings you all the way to the left. And the time that you've spent traveling to this island, you could have gotten like, you know, majority of these ones. So that's one thing that I'm really recommending is to push for accumulation of T1s like I have done because like once I've accumulated all of my T1s uh, requirements and as you can see over here currently I haven't traded for T1s for about a month now and as you can see my supply is dwindling down but my T2s and T3s are still abundant in a way I still have like you know for example this one for their drinking water and the trades exchange so there's no constant like one to one you know today it might be giant fishbone for an oyster box tomorrow it would be a giant fishbone for a pagoda so it's completely RNG so that's why like you it's very beneficial for you to stack up and like just have everything at your disposal so the current route that I take with that um, you know knowledge in mind is I get the T once then I trade off the T2s over here, 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 and two islands here. And the three islands here. And then also going over here sometimes. And then the T5s. And then if I have enough parley, I go over to Hakovin to get all of the coins at that route. But if this one is very low, um, around below 200 I don't bother and I use my alt in Ancado Inner Harbor I'm gonna show it a little bit and that's basically it I don't waste much time going over here on the left unless I really need to and sometimes I just use my Valor um, if time permits to just get the items for the T1s over here one thing uh, one good beauty about this one is you could transport your items. For example, I'm transferring my Vela items up to three to another island. So this one is going to show that I'm going to be transferring um, this one to Vela. And you can see weight limit is 2,000. 400 and send and that is on its way there which is 43 minutes so as you can see you could you know swap this put it from Ilya Island to Vela from Vela to Ancado Harbor and as you can see here on the harbor I have my T5s so that when I need to get the coins here and here I just use my alt as you can see here here's my alt and here's my Bartali sailboat. And I could just path from here at the inner harbor to Derko Island and then to Magoria. So that is another shortcut that you could consider. This is just a 10 million boat and it's very, very efficient to do so. So you don't have to go in and put your boat you know in a very very far position that would take time but once you have a carrack it's fairly easy you just like travel from here to here in just like um, around 15 minutes or so 
and back in you know 20 minutes depending on the wind directions and the waves since getting these mats takes time unfortunately i cannot include it in the video so i would be making another one to go over how to enhance your Eferia gear and complete all of these ones once i get the saps that i need and we would go to upgrade and then focus on very building your first um, character. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the video, um, picked up a lot of knowledge. And if you see anything that you would like to improve or have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. And I'll see you guys on the next one.